everybody, Chris Swanson, Sheriff Genesee County. Ken Waddy K, Free Hugs Project. And welcome to another episode of Black and Blue with some amazing guests. Yes, yes. Everybody, I hope that you, uh, you, you remove distractions right now. You pull over, you tell your kids, go grab some Cheerios, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, go play video games, because I want to listen to what Pastor Simpson has to say. Tell us your story. Um, well, I was uh, a kingpin at the time in the streets, um, very big, probably from here to Florida. Um, and I was kind of still young at the time, had millions of dollars and ran into God. Mm. And when I ran into God, God God came to me, woke me up at five in the morning. He said, go outside. And when I, I said, go outside. This my, I, I heard God's voice, but I didn't hear it this clear. And so I got up and I went out, it was five in the morning. He told me to look down the street, and I looked down the street. There was a van sitting down the street by my house. And at the time, I had a lot, a lot of stuff coming from the Illinois part of um, the state, well, part of the world, and, and it was on its way. And so he, I went back in the house. He said, go down there and look at the van. So I went down there and looked at this about 530. And it was, the van had an Illinois license plate. <laughs> and God says to me, God says to me, you're going to preach my word here or you're going to preach it in prison. <gasps> and so I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I, I'll give my life wholeheartedly to you. And at the time I was going to church. I was going to church. That's it. You know, was going. I was going. I was reading my Bible and I was going to church. I didn't know what I was tapping into. Mm. And I didn't know that all them seeds that I was planting and, and, and not missing church, making sure my family in church, mm -hmm. making sure. I didn't know that. That was gonna be a harvest from that. Even while in the streets. Even while I was in the, in the streets. streets. Wow. That harvest took place at that time when I heard his voice like never before. And, and and I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'm done. And from that day forward, I kept my word. I didn't see that van no more. You know? So just for people's perspective, how much weight were you moving in that area back? In that then? area, I was moving probably two thousand pounds and probably a hundred keys at a time. Mm. 2,000 pounds of weed <laughs> and 100 keys. At a time. And that I, every every other day I make 70,000 profit. I only moved as I felt like it. Wow. I only oh moved as gosh. I felt like it. Um, oh, I never God. was the type was always in the street. I was always with my family, so I had it. I only, I only touched stuff probably Friday and Saturday. But whenever my wife was off work, I never, I never did nothing. I, mm. I, I stayed away from it. So I had people under me. Mm. You what know, was so the time span that you were you were in the street from ninety to two thousand? Wow! So a ten, ten year, year run, ten, ten year years. run. So wow. that van that was there, who was in that van? Um, who do you think I was, was told that, that it was uh, um, undercover detectives from Chicago because um, they had they was they was getting a whole a whole circle of people and they wanted to see how <laughs> my relation to them was. So what I did was I cut relations at that day. God showed me that if I cut relations as that day, they don't got enough to get me. Mm. And so I cut relations at that day. I got my phone call off. I stopped. Do you realize that all they were doing is waiting for one piece yeah. of that puzzle again? Yeah. And then yeah. you're, you're in I the was organization. In, I was in the organization. Yeah. Mm. I was in, and, and the guys I was dealing with, they was cartels. They was literally, you know, from Mexico. Big they, guys that were yeah, supplying. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. was, they was cartel, cartel members. We had, I never ran out, you know, and so that's what made it, you know, where I was. So when I left, the grace of God. And these guys, you just can't walk away from. Mm, I bet. These guys, you just, you know, too much. You can't walk away from. But the way God had planted it, I told him I was done, and the guy was like. I, how, how you just going to quit? I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm through. He's like, well, I will make it sweeter for you. And I was like, it don't matter what you're going to do. I'm done. And I said, and whatever you're going to do, make your move. You know, because I was, I had so much confidence in God that I was will, willing to die for what I believed at yeah. this point. Wow. You know, I was willing to die for what I believed in. And, and this was 2000. And that switch happened that night. That night, that night, night saw that I saw that van. That's when he showed me, yep. And he, before that, he used to show me when they used to watch me. And then he'll tell me what routes to take and what to do. You know, because when it comes down, when anywhere it goes, you have Jesus in the spirit, then you have the word and the law. Okay? The law is for it to do what it's supposed to do, mm -hmm. arrest evil. Mm -hmm. The spirit <laughs> is to free those from under that arrest. Mm -hmm. And so it was either I was going to get arrested 
or I was gonna be free. Got it. You see, so I had to make a choice. Yeah. yeah. And that's what makes the cross. In my dead season, <laughs> which represent the casket, that's what this the this 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 part Straight of the cross bar. man, that, mm -hmm. that represent the casket. Mm -hmm. The 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 one goes horizontal, uh -huh. this represents the life. That's what makes the cross. So if I wouldn't have woke up out of my casket, mm. I wouldn't have been in the place where I am now in the spirit. So when he woke me up in the spirit, um, the journey began there. I was at the time my son, my wife was in the hospital pregnant with my son, and I was sitting in there. I remember rocking in the chair. She just had, had my son, and I said, I'm gonna make sure that my son ain't gonna be watching me in no prison no, no. Right. or talking to me through no window. Come on. Mm -hmm. God asked me, do you love him? I said, yes, I love him. He said, love is action. Mm -hmm. Wow. He said, what you going to do? He said, look out the window. I looked out the window. Still, they was watching me. I'm looking out the window at the hospital. My wife just had the baby. They sitting in front of the hospital. They just wanted to get me caught up in that circle. So fast forward, I, I left it from there. Um, God didn't look back. Didn't look back, no. I started going full fledged in God after that. I. I, I became a uh, deacon. Um, after that, I became a Sunday school teacher in church. And then, <laughs> then after that, um, my pastor wanted to make me a, a minister. I became a minister. Then he wanted to make me the pastor, of, of, of the youth pastor. And right then and there, God said, no, I'm going to make you the pa a pastor, but it ain't going to be here. And so God started dealing with me, got me to start the church in the back of our business because I built a, a business for my wife, and that business was – the 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 how can I say it? the stone that I look back at when I changed my life, mm. I built her a, a salon, oh, and that was that was the that was the stone that I always whenever I go God's presence been there since we built it. People come there and get saved. People come there the salon the salon. People come <laughs> there and get saved. his presence is there. Everybody yeah. thought it was like a church a when it was getting built. Mm. And now so how, oh, how long did you have that prophetic gift ooh, that's since a kid? For you? Since a kid. Wow. Since a kid. And yeah. so so even with that, and I know that some people are able to hear God's voice more clear than others. And you were saying that as you were being navigated away from mm -hmm. even getting in, into trouble in the streets, why do you think that it wasn't earlier that you felt like I needed to walk away from it? Like, do you think that there I was had, a period you had to experience? I had to be trained. Mm -hmm. I had to be trained. You know, you think about Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses spent 20 years in Egypt. 20 years in, 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 um, in, in the wilderness, then mm -hmm. 20 years leading through the wilderness. Yeah. And so everything he had was for his training. He understood that he was a priest. He was royal when he stayed in Pharaoh's house. Mm -hmm. So when he left Pharaoh's house, then he had to learn how to lead. He led the sheep. Mm -hmm. He had to learn the desert. He had to learn mm -hmm. the wilderness, yeah, which yeah, way yeah. then, which way not to go, mm -hmm. where water is and where water is not. Mm -hmm. And then after that, God sent him back. Now tell the people. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I'm going to have you lead them through this place. God knew it was going to be 40 years because mm -hmm. it should have been three days. Mm -hmm. But God knew it was going to be 40 years. But he had to have Moses so comfortable with where he was mm -hmm. that he was going to be all right. Even though he's going in a circle, he know he was progressing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Powerful. Going so, in a circle, he know he's still yeah. Yeah. And that was the yard. And, and that was your 10-year That was period. my 10-year period. It, it made it easier for you to now go into the prisons and things. And, because and you're like, I, I wasn't scared. People. Exactly. I wasn't scared. There's no fear, I, no it was, intimidation. It was, it's no fear, no intimidation. Yeah. Then yeah. the sure point where I... What God showed you about the prison. When, before this. I went to the prison, I was on a... when Before they made the call, I was on a 120-day fast without eating. Mm -hmm. And I was probably like 115 days into the fast. I went down to probably about one... 160, 165, and in the midst of it, right before I under, knew I was going to the prison, I had a dream, and in the dream, I had walked into an apartment complex with barbed wire fence all around it, and it was boarded all up, and I was standing there, and the Lord told me to speak, so when I began to open my mouth, people started busting out of the apartment complex, busting out the wood. The wood was coming down. They was coming out of it. And I'm like, what is this? Mm. And that day was when I got the call to come to the Get prison. <gasps> yeah. And this fast was a no food fast. No yes. food fast. Wow. Talk about yeah. Yeah. No food. There's a lot of different fasting out there. <laughs> I Daniel fast. That's mm -hmm. 21 days, but that's with food. That's mm -hmm. just not food that's unclean. And I do it for spiritual yes. strength mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. obedience. But you're talking 160 mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. 160 or 120? It was 120. But 120. I just came off of 
a, a 20 day fast, 21 day fast. Then he had me go on a 40 day fast. Oh then he gosh. had me go on a 120 day fast without eating. So it was all preparation on what I was getting ready to come to. So I had to understand body discipline. Wow. You know, because when it comes to anything, what, what, what mess a lot of people up by following Christ is that they lose discipline. Mm. So through that, I learned how to be disciplined um, to continue to follow him and continue to hear his voice because the voice become more severe as we follow. Yeah. You know, every day I hear God and I can hear God in, in just a way of a, a door closed or, or I can hear God by standing at a traffic light and somebody come back. I can see hearing his vibrations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear things before you see it. Mm -hmm. So so that's why it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. It's our hearing. And so I learned and I did a study in on that hearing so I can hear him and know who he is and know when he talks is to me. Is that gift for everybody? That gift I don't I, I I say I say when Christ died, he says he he he, he's, he left his gifts. Yes. But I believe that some are chosen for the gift. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe and it's got to really be in your heart. You know, and you know, we, we know man judges the outer part, but God judges the heart. One thing about about following God and having this type of gift, you gotta have a pure heart. God had to teach me not to have no ill will toward nobody, don't have no judgment on nobody. I can't look at people a certain way. And I had to literally learn because I was never a judgmental person. You know, I believe that everybody could be saved, especially if he saved me. Yeah. If he pulled me My up, God. I was the I was at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I was hiding. Yeah. And yet God found me, you know, and yeah. if you're going to pull me up, I look at everybody as a miracle working power movement of God when I see him. I don't care if they're in a prison. I don't care if they're in a pit. If he did it for me, mm. he would do it for you. That's why it's called a testimony. Man. <laughs> Man. So Bishop comes to your church, then mm -hmm. he comes to the house, gives you the tie, mm -hmm. and then you start building a relationship. We start building a relationship. Um, he went through a... a a severe moment of his life after that, um, where he he went to the point where he was married and and through his marriage, um, he was going through a divorce and he was man he was broke down, and this was the breakdown after the breakdown, mm. you know and I matter of fact I, I have matter vowed, of fact you uh before, uh me and her split, the prophet contacted me mm -hmm. and said uh let's go let's go eat, just like that, that was on a Saturday. We went and sat and he never talked to me this way. He talked to me real strong. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Lord told me to tell you, you didn't got to take all that. Mm -hmm. He said, God revealed to me what's happening in your bed chamber. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. secret stuff. Now, I haven't talked to him, mm -hmm. but he went to telling me. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like this sitting at the dinner table like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Now, he talked to me Saturday. Monday come, my wife at the time tell me, she called me, said we need to separate. That was mm -hmm. on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Wow, because she was messing messing around. That's what I was told. Yeah. Um, she said she didn't, but she told me she wanted to separate yeah. and separated. And from there, that led to a divorce. Yeah. But the prophet had already had told me the yeah, Lord said, that. Yeah. My God, that's how sensitive. So you were in a deep spot a second time around. Second time around. And now he's pulling you back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I made it my vow to make sure that it was around Thanksgiving and stuff. Well, it was Round I would make sure that he stayed at my house with me. Wow. Yeah, he come and got me come uh, every day. Let him sit with me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know to keep me, keep my mind. You know, so I don't get it a slump. You but know. you didn't even know who he was. You knew him from back in the day, but you didn't, you didn't have a friendship with him. You're building this, like you're yeah. you're opening your home yeah. for a guy did. Yeah. Physically, I didn't know him, but yeah. as Christ. See, that's that's why we <laughs> connect. <laughs> you know, and, and that's that's we build. We spent so many times building the up walls. While Christ is trying to break down walls. Yes. My God, that's good. We spend so many years building walls that God has no significance with. Yeah. You know, and he tries to break it down. When it comes down to even the church, when it comes down to religion, when it comes down to I don't care if you're Methodist or Baptist or First Baptist or or, or Presbyterian, I don't care if you're Kojic or that. We build all these walls that separates our belief. Mm -hmm. When Christ, the Bible says that Christ is one with God. And we are one with him. So how do we build walls that separates our right. belief? And so we get people that pick parts of the Bible and believe it instead of believing the whole Bible. Mm. Mm. And so with, when you believe the whole Bible wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. God will move wholeheartedly in you. And you'll be able to feel things, see things that I don't ask to see, stuff that I don't ask to hear. But he know I'm not going to judge it. He's know I'm not going to judge it. That's why he judge brought it. you 
Holy. That's why he brought him. He brought him to me. I, my ministry is built on the prophetic. My calling, that's bigger than the prophetic, is is healing, miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders. We didn't had over a hundred people with cancer in our church, and come, God had me bless water. God had me lay hands. God had me baptize people in water. Angels shows up, heals them. It's bigger than just the prophecy. So you connected with me because of someone else. This whole topic is about relationships. Mm -hmm. I met Ken yep. yeah. because I met John L. You mm -hmm. met John L. You met him. It's, I mean, the whole theme of this show is by what you think you're doing now it may not matter. You don't know what seeds are being planted, what relationships are being built out to do this. So clearly of the four of us, I'm the only white male here and mm -hmm. I'm the only police officer. So since this is a black and blue show, what have you experienced and, and what have you seen over the last year with what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Because I've been so embedded with you that that proves that unity and conversations and the path that we're on is going to work and it has worked. Hey, the most powerful scripture, most powerful scripture says, if you know my disciples, you'll know by the way that they show love mm. toward one another. <laughs> you are the example of Christ. What you're doing is not words, it's action. Yes. You're saying, if you watch me, if you study me, you will see yes. that there's no ill, there's no, no no nothing hidden. This is who you get. Believe me, I'm telling y'all, yes. what you see <laughs> on camera, what you see in your commercials, what you see on Facebook or on YouTube, this is literally who he is is mm -hmm. there's no hidden agendas it's real and i love that you know because i'm the type of person that i can rock with you if you're real mm -hmm. i i have spent so much time around phoniness that i don't i can't i can't mm -hmm. you, you if you understand i can't yeah, yeah. i can't be around how long does it take you to to, to see phoniness? a minute, <laughs> yeah, a minute. Yeah. remember he'll see her a minute you know a minute yeah. when so when i saw you <laughs> when i saw you we met my heart it's a feeling I get, a vibration. Yeah. My heart, God says, this is connection. This is time. This is season. I'm doing this. And I began to think about the story of Peter when he was on the boat. And he was he was fishing. Jesus had um, got crucified on the cross. They thought they lost their Savior. Yeah. They was at a dark moment in yeah. their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they went fishing. His familiar ground. Mm -hmm. He knew how to fish. Yes. Right? He knew this was familiar. But he was lacking he was lacking the spiritual move of Christ. Mm -hmm. So he fished all night and he didn't catch nothing. nothing. And so when Christ came, he says, what you been doing? He says, I've been fishing. He says, but I haven't caught anything. He says, well, cast your net on the right side of the boat. <laughs> it's a time and it's a season for you to catch. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that they caught so many fish that his partners. They had to call the partners. They had mm -hmm. to call the partners to come together. See, we're in a, we're in a partner moment. We all been been predestined for this moment. We was born for this moment. Come on. We, we didn't know each other beforehand, mm -hmm. but in our spirit, we came from the same place. So that's why when we get together, it's familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's familiar. You can't have just met these guys. Yeah. I mean, you've seen him, but you just met this guy, especially this guy. Yeah. Like, what, what are you thinking about yeah. like the last hour and a half? No, no, it's it's powerful. And I mean, and when we talk about prophecy, I mean, there was a moment that happened mm -hmm. off camera right before <laughs> the episode started that confirmed that right beforehand. Because even what uh, the prophet is saying about trying to like he could assess phonies immediately, right? Remember, we talked about that yes. just last night on That's the right. episode. Because wow. uh, Chris and I, we were talking about um, our careers as speakers. Mm -hmm. And I said, sometimes... Uh, as speakers, we we tend to judge other speakers because we're like that person doesn't live like mm -hmm. that. No way. And all this motivation and mm -hmm. hooping and hollering mm -hmm. like that's all just that's a gimmick. Mm -hmm. But that's not who that person is. Yeah. And he can't save anybody in this mm -hmm. in this audience because it's all fluff. Yeah. And so we were talking about that. 
And so then um, today, immediately upon meeting you guys, I was like, these are good brothers. But then the confirmation mm. came in, oh, right? And I feel like sometimes that's the way God works, right? Yes, right. Yes, right. If you yeah. had any self-doubt <laughs> about sure. who you're talking to, mm -hmm. let me give you confirmation, confirmation. really quick mm -hmm. so that you can move, move forward, forward in a way to where you're like, trust what they're saying. And remember, you, you said that yesterday, Chris, um, where remember how I said, Whenever I'm presenting to a large audience, I'll put out videos yes. to give validation yes. of the stories that I'm about to tell. And you said because once they can believe you in the mm. beginning part, they'll believe you throughout the rest of the story mm, because they part. know that he's yeah. telling the truth. There's, yeah. there's yeah. validation of, of that thing right throughout it. And so exactly what you said last night yeah. about once you show it in the beginning just happened trust here. the work and so now we just saw that <laughs> right in the beginning we hear that story <laughs> right we'll let you right know in the beginning of the show <laughs> that i saw your did, reaction you went crazy yeah well i was blown away because especially the time span of, yeah. of what he spoke about yeah. and i was like i know exactly what happened yeah. four days ago oh, and wow. yeah and so it tied right back into our message last night about validation in the beginning That's right. is all you need, mm -hmm. right? And then trust the remainder of what that person is saying because a fraud, you'll also identify mm -hmm. immediately yes. in the beginning as mm -hmm. well. This guy's on some nonsense, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not believing anything else yep. that he's talking about, right? And so in the same way that the prophet just said, a minute, it takes me a minute to know. Yep. And that's the same way we are when that's we're looking right. at people. But, and that's powerful because where I come from, I came from, it was it was it was hard knocks, mm -hmm. and and one mistake you can lose your life. Yeah, you can lose your life. And and I was dealing with stuff that if I got caught and any time pulled over, it was over. So I had to always think further ahead by who was I who I was around. Yes, you know, were the, were they real tight? Mm -hmm. Because for ten years you have to been able to make a good decision because not being caught. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. for ten years, yeah. and so so I kept my circle real. T I didn't hang around a lot of people. People wanted to be around me, but I, if I didn't feel you was right, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. You wouldn't even give me the talk. Yeah. It's another. It's that walk around. <laughs> yeah. of, it's, it's the that, desert walk. Yeah, the desert. that's mm -hmm. that desert walk. So I got to tell you, this is a uh, this is a fun <laughs> fact that you don't know, but I'm about to tell you. So obviously, when I met them last year, mm -hmm. and he did the same thing in December of 2020 that just happened before we started recording the show, Jamie was in the room, my mm -hmm. wife. Riley was in the room. He was 22 at the time. And there's a number of people in my office. And as I said, Bishop came in, blah, loud, Swanson style. <laughs> and yeah. and Papa came in. He just did that little talk. And then he started speaking. And my wife, who's like Sabrina, is very, very cautious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she looks out for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he started speaking... She looked at Riley. Riley looked at her, and we're just like, you, "I can't believe this." Yeah. So uh, one, clearly, one sec, one sec Sheriff uh, Diana, are we good? We're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Clearly, we didn't have a chance to talk until later that night, and you know, I was blown away. He was saying stuff that My is, God. is literally we just talked about it the night before as a family. Like there's no way and there was no way that my son and my wife would have been there when yeah. I met him for the first time and him for the first mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Last, uh, next but it was that validation, was again, that validation. right in the beginning. I, yeah, okay. from the beginning, just yeah, like yeah. we talked about. Uh -huh. Right out of the gate, say yeah. it, establish your credibility, and the rest they'll believe. Yeah. Yep. I went to my pastor. I said, I got to ask you about this guy. Said, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> something just happened. I said, but what does the Bible say about prophets? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, he goes, well, God can use anybody for mm -hmm. anything. So that's the first thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. But a prophet... Today is one who can validate what they say by their journey and the outcome of what they prophesy. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're talking to somebody, who am I to say that those words are not from the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. So I said, your best way is to listen to what they say yep. and to validate that if they're saying it is for personal gain mm -hmm. or because it's from the word. Mm, that's yeah. good. And I'm telling you, and right then I thought, He's the real deal. Yeah. Because I, he he has asked for nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't do anything. I just am obedient. And the Lord uses all of us. He uses you and come out, stay out. He's using you in our your movement. He's mm -hmm. using me. Yeah. So why can't he use the words of someone else? So yeah. all I do is I stay obedient. I listen. And I use the wisdom of Solomon to, and discernment mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do the things and know, man, 
The Lord doesn't speak to me audibly. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not a Bible lesson, but man, after this episode, you don't need to go to church. (laughs) This is your church. (laughs) But I also know that somebody would pour into me if they didn't believe in what they saw. Mm -hmm. So as I'm trying to validate them, they're validating Mm -hmm. me. And together, we're we're like-minded. Man, when you begin to know who you are, you know, and and I I played, I did the Office of Prophet um, from a childhood. I understood what a prophet was. I understood how God spoke to me. That's what kept me out of prison. That's what kept me from from falling in the things that my other friends felt. Like I heard the word and I obeyed it, mm-hmm. you know. And so, so when you come to a graduation in that, when I went through that fast, when I went through those fast, there's there's elevations, there's there's offices that's created for you to operate your gift in. Mm-hmm. So you have a prophet, but then you have the office of the prophet. A prophet can tell you things that's going to happen. Or, or things that you might have visited in your past. But the office of a prophet can unlock your destiny. Mm. God gives him the authority and the power to speak and unlock your destiny. Why? Because God trusts that vessel. Yeah. Yeah. So when, whenever I begin to speak or whenever God begins to give me a word, I already know it's already validated mm-hmm. that, that my church is full of, full of, full of, full of people that's been... Then the valid that if you hear the stories of the members of our not even at my church, just in our city, not even our city, all around the world. If you hear the the, the word, God will not allow your word to fall to the ground. So so I take it as though this is a lifestyle that I can't I gotta guard myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I gotta protect my holiness. I gotta protect who I am. I don't speak much. I don't down people. I know the power of my tongue. Mm-hmm. So I try not to speak evil or, or negative yeah. on nobody because I know angels are sitting there ready to work on my behalf. Why? How I know this? Because I see them. Mm. They dwell around me. They around my house. My kids see them. Wherever I go, people begin to see them. So I know I have to take this as the office that he has yep. given me. Mm. So he said, what's the difference between what you say and then somebody else say? I told him that God puts the key in my mouth. Yep. Mm. The key. It's a key. It's, it's the key. He gave it. Wow. It's to unlock. You know, and so so when I when I know who I am, I can go into the the a place of millionaires and billionaires. That don't that don't move me. That don't shake me. Money don't move me. It don't yeah. shake me. And what move and shake me. Right. Mm-hmm. What move and shake me is that my relationship stay pure with God. Mm. That stay pure. So many people build things on this side of the earth, yeah. mm-hmm. and yeah. they don't have nothing left when it's time to die wow. on the other side. Wow. And even Job, we learn from his story that when Job went through what he went through, yeah. it was a nine-month process of him losing everything. And you wonder, how did Job get dealt before his trouble? Wow. You want to know how? Because Job took his money and his belief out of the earth, and he put it in a trust fund in heaven. Mm. Wow. Treasures in heaven. Treasures in he heaven. stored it up in heaven. Wow. So that's why when, when God told the devil, he says, what are you doing? He says, I'm look, run, walking to and fro. I'm, 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 be, I'm, I'm he, What he's saying is I'm bored. Yeah. He says, have you considered Job? He says, I did, but you got a hedge around him. Hmm. He says, here, I want you to have an opportunity to take Job through because I got an opportunity to lift Job up. And through my opportunity to lift him up, I'm going to let you have an opportunity to take him through. Hmm. Because he already has put his trust in the trust fund. So I'm going to let you take everything from him on earth. Yeah. And he ain't going to lose it because he got everything stored I, up in heaven. I've got something really quick. And this is it's a separate topic from our conversation today. But I know that people um, ask this a lot because I know mm-hmm. that there have been times where people try and challenge um, our faith as Christians because they say, um, your guys' Bible doesn't mention dinosaurs. And I know that in the book of Job, there's a reference where I believe mm-hmm. God says, um, remember behemoth. And then God goes on to mm-hmm. describe behemoth. Mm-hmm. And he talks about um, the, uh, the, the his legs of like a cedar tree mm-hmm. and the trunk mm-hmm. and yep. such. Um, I took that as a description uh, as, a a, as a dinosaur mm-hmm. um, because obviously the word dinosaur wasn't even created Great until really. the 1800s, mm-hmm. right? And so is that is that um, something that w- when people try and challenge me with that, mm-hmm. is that a valid that's a, that's a valid that's reference a valid. But, of a dinosaur? But the biggest thing about the Bible, always remember, the book of Genesis means new beginning. Mm-hmm. That means that there's some things that we have never seen or never going to encounter that as human before. that happened before we were Got even it. thought of. Wow. So when we see Genesis, 
you know, we see a, a world that was in darkness. Yeah. And the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord hovered over the darkness yeah. of the land and the land was with void. Mm -hmm. And so God began to speak, recreating mm. yes. something new yeah. that, that we never knew of that was before him. Wow. And so that that's that ain't that ain't even nothing we have to search. All we gotta do is got search that what's been recreated. Yeah. Focus on what is Focus now. Focus on not, what is yeah. now. We don't know about, we don't know about a, <laughs> me knowing what a fossil is and a dinosaur yeah, is ain't gonna save me. Doesn't it's not gonna <laughs> save no, me. I, I agree. What's gonna save me if I tap into what I've been created yes. for and who I've been created for and if I can listen to him now on, and know what's coming hey, tomorrow? You guys are having Jeez. church on Come this on. episode. Let Lord. me leave it up. <laughs> you guys are having church. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm what about what that. we're Thank doing is going to bring people together? Like, how is what Ken and I is doing? All our speaking, what you're doing is going to build race relations. How is it going to build police relations? Like, how is what we're doing? And do you see uh, do you see progress since since we were doing this the last year? I mean, I know you just met us, but you've watched the show, you've seen it. Like, let's take the spiritual move and say, how do we do this at Earth? What more do we need to do? What does everybody watch and listen need to do? I like to say, Sheriff, what I saw. And coming over to Flint and watching you and watching the sheriff's office, keep doing what you're doing. Mm. You showing love, just like Prophet Simpson said, you showing love. And that's what captivated me. When I came to that office, like I told many other people, I saw love. I felt love. Sheriff put his hand up and also deputized me. My God, I said, when he deputized me, I got so many calls back home and <laughs> texts and emails and messages. My God. So, to see the love of God, to say, yes, you had a scar. Mm -hmm. Sheriff said, yes, I know you had a scar, but we don't even see that. Yeah. Today, I deputize you. Glory to God. Yeah. To see that love, Sheriff, to even see you take stuff, food, money, and different stuff. People was in need in the Flint community. He watched when he gave $1,000 and yeah. helped. Mm -hmm. Seeing that woman, roof. Tree fell. Yeah. Sheriff go over there, chop the tree down. Wow. Sheriff wants to make dead. sure they yeah. put up and they, and they get the funds and get everything together to go and put that back together. Mm -hmm. That woman not leaking in her roof. Seeing stuff like that, Sheriff, that's what's bringing and, uh, and moving and erasing racial, moving and erasing that, uh, that wall, as Prophet was talking about, tearing that wall down from black and blue. Seeing that, the love, you stay in love. You stay operating in love. And you, you're fulfilling the scripture when it says, for God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, perish. but have everlasting That's life. Right. You, you're fulfilling the scripture. God so loved the world. Man, God gave us Chris Swanson. Come on. He so loved the world. He yeah. gave us Chris Swanson. He gave us you for the moment to A display to display what it is to show love and to help and to, first of all, out of anything else, show forgiveness. Yes. Because people, you got family members still holding grudges with family members. Yes. Husband and wife still holding grudges. For you to show forgiveness on that type of level. My God. That if all police stations, all police, all law enforcement, yes. all mm -hmm. people would just catch on yeah. and don't be biased. Come like on. you say, thinking, thinking your Bible don't talk about dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't be trying to figure out mm -hmm. what already God then already figured you in. Mm -hmm. We will be able to move faster than what is moving. It ain't no way that every city shouldn't go through the program that God gave you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I agree. And we're using this platform that has nothing to do with the sheriff's office to tell a different message to a different crowd that you've got to find a thousand Kens, yes. a thousand Chris's, right. and a thousand Holdens, and a thousand Simpsons, and imagine what we could do yeah, with a thousand of these right here. It'd ignite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah It'd ignite. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. That's the word. <laughs> I, uh, I, you're going to have to end this one, man, because I'm just, I'm just in Jeez. awe. All, all, all I could say is, you know, and I know we always finish on our final thoughts. Actually, there's not much I can say other I know. than you guys just went to church on this episode. And, and if there are people who are, are not uh, people of, of faith, you're not followers of, of Christ, you know, right now you're, you're looking at four men who obviously are. And I know that yes. on this show, it's not something, 
I'm sure there's there's been glimpses of our faith. I'm sure people have assumed that Chris and I are, are both Christians, but know that a lot of the heart for us to serve, a lot of the heart for us to love on people, that's where that comes from. Mm-hmm. There's people that I've met on the front lines who try and challenge me and say, why do you think that love is going to change things? Why do you think that showing empathy to both sides is going to change things? And I say because that's the start of bringing everyone to the same table and having these conversations. And we're seeing that today. We're seeing now even more men of faith, greater men of faith, people who have gone through the fire, right? Because we've we've seen things in, in our lives and our professions, but they've seen things on, on a level that we That's have right. not even experienced yeah. yet. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that watch this show that they've been tried by fire as well, you know, mm-hmm. and they might yes. say, you know, you guys think you went through some tough stuff. I went through this or I'm, mm-hmm. I almost lost my life because of this. We understand that. Mm-hmm. And, and I hope that all we can continue to do is lead by example, that's it. you know, and that's that's the goal of this show wow. is that if we can just set a better example as men, especially, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking at four completely different men mm-hmm. sitting here, different racial backgrounds, different age, different experiences, complete different parts of the country, <laughs> <laughs> right? Never, yeah. Everything across the board, right? But we're all able to sit here as brothers and as one unit because we're aligned by our hearts, we're aligned by our faith, and there's a lot of power in that. And so I think for men watching the show, women watching the show, boys, girls, w- whatever it is, know that if we if we start from the heart, then there's so much that we can do together. And unfortunately, you know, we divide ourselves so much over trivial things, Mm -hmm. over your Bible doesn't Mm -hmm. mention Mm -hmm. dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Come on, these are trivial Trivial things that we're like, you know, because of that, I can't connect with this Mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. Whether you missed all of these opportunities and these blessings and these things that we can do together to change the world, Mm -hmm. but you've allowed this little political idea Mm -hmm. or this little faith-based idea Mm -hmm. cause you to say, I can't rock with those people. So Mm -hmm. don't use one little thing you may have uncommon to erase all those things you do have in, in common. common. Absolutely. Stand on, on, on common ground. You know, mm-hmm. we talked about this yesterday. One of my five points that we gave this corporation when we were talking was build extraordinary relationships. And remember, I tried to end the show on there yes. because I was like, this is the important message that I want to leave you all with is build extraordinary relationships. Right. Because, you know, that when people really think about the, the key word in extraordinary, it's extraordinary if you break it down. This relationship is extraordinary. extraordinary. Come on <laughs> right? Yep. Like, right. I would not connect with a person like you. You heard my story I know. from the stage yesterday mm-hmm. and the way my father was removed from the house from people who look like you. I easily could have grown up and said, nah, mm-hmm. I'm cool. Right. But instead, I'm like, you know what? There's there's a brotherhood that can be formed here so that the next generation doesn't have to ever see me go out That's like right. that. Mm-hmm. See these guys go out like that. You know, yeah. and so these are ways that we change yeah. the world. And it's through building extraordinary relationships. Yeah. And so that's what this was that's today. Powerful. And so, yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, we just appreciate you tuning in. If you want to get a hold of these guys, um, you could uh, you could look up what the church um, Daniel's Den Ministries in Saginaw, Michigan, the place where God shuts the lion's mouth. Awesome. Yeah. Bishop, how do they get a hold of you? Anointed uh, Temple Ministries. You can reach me at tdholden, dot, uh, tdholden at gmail.com. Yeah. Oh. And, of course, you can send us a message to Black and Blue with Diana, who's behind the camera. We'll try to get it to him. But we just hope that you were blessed and encouraged. Yeah. It's been a great episode, multiple parts in this. I love you guys. I love, love you, man. Love you guys. Love you, too. We'll see you next time. Yeah.